Hey guys, Backyard Scientist here. Now, everybody has a microwave in the kitchen, but do they have a megawave in the backyard? Probably not, so we're gonna be making one today. So what is a megawave, do you ask? Well, we're gonna take these five microwaves, take out the internals, and then slap them on top of here. This bad boy can fit so many microwaves on it. Anyway, we're gonna make this a super powerful microwave. We're gonna microwave all kinds of stuff in here. We're gonna microwave a Hot Pocket. We're gonna microwave a microwave, microwaving a Hot Pocket, aluminum foil, and whatever else I can find in the garage. So let's get started. I wanted to make my own giant microwave because I saw some people try it before on a TV show. I don't think they did it right though because one of the guys watches stopped working and they tried microwaving a cup of water and it actually came out colder than it was before. So I want to see if I can improve on the design. And this is one you should definitely not try at home. I may not look like it but I actually kind of know what I'm doing sometimes. Just want to give a quick mention that this video is sponsored by Google Science Fair and more on that in just a little bit. I thought taking apart microwaves would be easy, but they were so full of security screws that it was a major pain in the butt to take them apart. Still, 12 seconds isn't too bad. This is what I've been after. These are the main parts to the microwave oven. First, let's take a look at the magnetron. This is the part that actually makes the microwaves that cook your food. So this is the actual magnetron that's hiding beneath all the heat sinks and stuff. And if we take it apart, we can clearly see how it works. We have the heating element and the... Uh, no, I'm actually pretty sure this is black magic, but if you want to learn more, I'll put a link in the video. Now that I've taken apart all the microwaves, it's time to build the box to put them on, but let me just save you the agony of watching me put in a million rivets into this box. Let's talk about something a little bit more riveting instead. I want to tell you about the 2018 Google Science Fair. Google Science Fair is a global online competition available to anybody aged 13 to 18. It's really simple, it's just like a project fair for your school, but instead of submitting it to your school, you send it to Google instead. Every idea has the power to shape our world, even if it doesn't seem like a great idea at first. It could be a big idea, a small idea, your brand new own invention, or you could be building off of somebody else's idea. For example, if I was able to submit my own project to the science fair, I would probably do something about the red tide that's currently affecting a bunch of Florida beaches right now. So, for all you 13 to 18 year old scientists watching the video, you have until December 12th to submit your project. And trust me, there are some great prizes this year. We have educational scholarships, we have travel experiences, so you better start working on it today. Find out more information down below at the Google Science Fair website, I'll put the link in the description, and I hope you have some cool submissions because I'll be watching them. Perfect timing, looks like I just finished building the microwave. Let's take a look and see how it works. Well, here's the finished product. It's a two foot by two foot by two foot cube, and I ended up putting four magnetrons on top of it, so it's about four times as powerful as a normal microwave oven. The sides are made out of sheet metal riveted to pieces of aluminum. I got this piece of perforated sheet metal for the door, and I used this stainless steel braided rope between the body of the microwave and the door to form a gasket so microwaves can't get out. Locking it up is pretty simple. I just close the door, and then I use these little latches right here to pull it in tight to really clamp down on that piece of braided wire so no microwaves can get out. And this right up here, we have our light bulb. It is extremely bright and I'm, it better be extremely bright because there's a $30 light bulb. Now we know how it works, it's time to test it out. I got this microwave meter on Amazon and it should tell us how much microwaves are leaking from this thing. And I don't say this too much, but you probably shouldn't try this one at home. Are you recording? Yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe we need to do some more tests. Well, it looks like the microwave does leak just a little bit. Not enough to be dangerous, but I don't want to take any chances, so I built a Faraday cage that I can hide in. Microwaves have a pretty big wavelength of a couple inches, and the holes on the Faraday cage are really small, so the microwaves really can't get into the Faraday cage and instead are directed through a cable into a stake I put in the ground over there. I probably could have made this a little bit better design. Here we go, three, two, one. What's the reading say? 0.00. Perfect. Classy visual of me crawling out of a box. All right, so far so good. Doesn't look like anything caught on fire, so let's change that and do our first test. Tin foil, it's a classic. It should make some nice sparks, hopefully. Let's try it out. All right, here we go. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, it's sparking. Everything's warm which means all the magnetrons are working. Oh, that one's actually extra hot. Oh yeah. Oh. Can you smell it? It's stinky. Why is it stinky? Look, it's burnt. Oh yeah, it's just burned holes right in it. All right, so what's another good thing in the microwave? Like a CD? Oh yeah. yeah. So which CD are you ruining? Mars Attacks. It's actually a good movie. I like it, so I feel bad about destroying it, but send it off with a techno Viking funeral in flames and electricity and smoke. That's how I want to go out. Keep doing stuff like this and you will. Here we go. Three, 
two, one. melted the heck out of that CD. Looks Woo. like it got run over by a car. Maybe like a, a car that was also a flamethrower. You know something I've always wanted to try but you never let me do on the inside microwave? Lighters. Yes, yes lighters, I'll be right back. So I think that if I put the lighters really close to each other, they should make a spark and then we'll have a big old explosion. I think so. Okay, so unfortunately that didn't work. So I'm gonna try lighters and tin foil together. Ooh, I'll lay the lighters down and put some tin foil on top. That should be good. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Whoa, it's on fire. It is on fire. Oh my God. All right, so there was definitely a fire there. I went back and I watched the video and I could see that as soon as the lighter got melted or there's a hole in it, you could see it start spinning away. And as soon as that happened, the tin foil sparked at the perfect time and it made this lighter turn into a little rocket. Yep, it was melted right there. And <laughs> this one still works. Now we're gonna try some Christmas lights. It is Christmas in September. Now, now uh, I just want to see if they still work, so let's plug them in and see, and see what happens. All right, uh, safety squints. Well, nada. Nothing. <laughs> Christmas is ruined. All right, well, we've been having some fun with this thing, but I actually built it to solve a problem. You know when you're microwaving something and you take your food out and it's lava on the outside and ice cold on the inside? Well. I got an idea that'll make it lava everywhere. By adding another microwave, we should be able to microwave our food exponentially faster. Let's try it out. Ooh. And now we load our pepperoni flavored scientific standard snack into the microwave. And two minutes. Man, I'm gonna have to be fast on this one. Let me fix the camera first. All right, here we go. Two minutes. Here we go, three, two, one. All right, and that is two minutes. Let's go see what it looks like. Whoa, okay. Well, uh, I'd say that's the result. Let's take a look on the inside and see what happened. Ooh. Oh boy. Let me let, let me let this air out for a second. And it is still smoking. All right, let's see. Does it even still turn on? Well, it still makes noise. Uh, nope, doesn't work anymore. Oh. Man, I was sure that would work. Well, well let's, let's still feel it. Oh no, it's still cold in the center. Still. Oh, look at that. The, the, the cheese isn't even melted. Still smells good. Not too bad, not too bad. Look at that, all these little circuit traces are probably perfect little antennas for the microwaves. And uh, yeah. Well, you know what? I'd call that a success. It took me about two weeks to build this microwave, so I'm amazed it even works at all. I mean, hey, that microwave in your kitchen has been refined over a period of like 60 years, and, and you know, I made this in two weeks, and 
I think it cooks stuff just fine. Even though everything I put in there does catch on fire, it's still being cooked. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed watching this video, and I really do hope some of you sign up for the Google Science Fair. If you have any ideas of what you want to do or what you think other people should try to do, put them down in your comments or just comment below what you think about my microwave. Thanks for watching and see you later.